Lesson 3, Predators and Prey. Have you ever seen a film of a lion hunting down a zebra? Have you ever watched a cat chase a mouse? These are both, both examples of predator-prey relationships in different ecosystems. Learn how predator-prey relationships can affect population size. Some animals eat other animals for food. These animals are called predators. Can you name some predators? Animals that predators eat are called prey. Can you name some prey? We usually think of predators as animals that hunt or kill other animals. Herbivores are like predators. They prey on plants. Living things that are well adapted to their environment are likely to survive long enough to reproduce. These organisms have gotten very good at eating and avoiding being eaten. Can you think of some adaptations that make an animal a good predator? Hawks have sharp eyesight so they can swoop down on their prey from high up in the sky. Wolves have a good sense of smell so they can track down animals quickly. Rattlesnakes have fangs, can sense body heat, and can also feel vibrations with their tongue. Many predators have adaptations such as claws, stingers, or poison to help them catch their prey. Fast running animals can chase down their prey. Camouflaged predators have coloring or markings that help them blend in with their surroundings. These animals wait quietly and pounce on the prey that come near. Did you know? Predatory plants? Some plants trap prey in folding leaves, sticky liquid, or balloon-like bladders. An example of that would be a Venus flytrap. Just as predators are adapted to catching prey, prey are adapted to avoid it, to avoid being caught. Most animals try to run away or hide from predators. Others fight back with horns and hooves. Animals such as birds and prairie dogs sound alarms to warn their family that danger is near. The same camouflage that helps predators hide from prey also helps prey hide from predators. Some animals use color to keep predators away. The skunk waves its striped tail as a warning flag. The bright colors of a poisonous tree frog signal that the frog's skin oozes a toxic chemical. Some non-poisonous animals are even camouflaged as poisonous animals to trick others into leaving them alone. Octopus use camouflage to disappear into the background. How does this animal keep from being eaten? They warn by the warning color of its tail and by spraying a chemical as a defense. Unlike animals, Plants cannot run away from animals who prey on them. They have their own adaptations to keep them from being eaten. Some plants have thick, waxy leaves that animals find hard to chew. Other plants grow hair that insects can't wiggle through easily. Some plants drip sticky liquids, while others are full of small, hard grains called silica, which act like sandpaper on the mouths of animals. A few plants, such as the stinging nettle and poison ivy, contain poisonous chemicals. Some plants just plain taste bad. Animals and insects learn to stay away from plants that have these adaptations. If you have ever brushed against blackberry bushes, you know all about thorns. The hairs on these leaves keep insects from eating the t nasty leaf tissues. The poison ivy leaves contain poisonous chemicals that cause an irritating rash on the skin. Did you know? 
People use many plant chemicals as flavorings in cooking. You know some of these chemicals as cinnamon, clove, and peppermint. How do predator-prey relationships affect a community? Predators help keep ecosystems in balance. Predators often kill individuals that are weak or sick, and the strongest members of the prey population survive. In this way, predators actually help prey populations stay healthy and strong. Predators can also keep prey populations from getting too large. Deer, for example, have few natural predators besides wolves and human hunters. In areas where there are no predators to keep the number sizes down, deer populations can rapidly increase in size. When populations become too large, the animals may run out of food or die of diseases. Predators help keep ecosystems naturally in balance. Populations of insects, birds, and mammals increase or decrease from time to time. Scientists have wondered what causes these changes. Sizes of Dungeness crab populations, for example, go through many changes. Predation and disease take their toll, but the crabs have good years too due to increased food supply or good environmental conditions. By studying these crabs over time, scientists have seen how factors in the environment cause these changes. Scientists keep careful track of crab numbers, water temperature, and numbers of predators. Then they use a mathematical models to predict how a crab population might change. Here, science and math work together. Some predators have a huge effect on the size of the population of other members of their community. An example is the sea otter. One of the sea otter's favorite food is sea urchin. Sea urchins feed mainly on kelp, a type of seaweed that grows in dense forests near ocean coast. In areas where many sea otters live, such as the Pacific coast of North America, very few sea urchins survive. Sea otters keep the sea urchin population small. Since there are few sea urchins around to eat kelp, the kelp in these areas grow lush and thick, but where sea otters are rare, many sea urchins survive and kelp is almost absent. What do you think would happen if the sea otter population in an area became smaller? In the last 20 years, sea otter populations off the coast of Alaska have decreased. As a result, the sea urchin population has increased and the sea urchins have begun destroying the area's kelp forest. Why did the sea otters disappear? Scientists think that killer whales have been eating the sea otters. The whales' previous prey, seals and sea lions, have decreased in population as well. But why did the sea and the sea lion population decrease? Do you know what seals and sea lions eat? Fish! The number of fish in this area are also decreasing, in part because of all the fishing done by humans. Predator-prey populations can change in regular cycles. Scientists use graphs to show the rise and fall of populations and to point some interesting relationships. This is your graph. On this piece of paper, it shows graph A, graph B, and graph C. Continue to answer the questions to learn more about prey, predator, graphing. Which graph shows a population rise and fall over time? Would that be graph A, where the graph just goes up, graph B, where it goes up and down, or graph C, where it starts off high? and goes down. Which graph shows a population that rises and falls? That would be graph B. 
Which graph shows a population that has fallen to zero? Graph A goes up, graph B goes up and down, but never to the very bottom, and graph C goes all the way to the bottom, zero. So which graph shows a population that has fallen to zero? That would be graph C. Study graph C. What factors may have caused the population to decrease this way? Continue to look at deer population changes, the lynx and the hare, the wolf and the mouse, the arctic fox and the lemon.